Okay then, I'm Fire, and this is part two of my guide on how to play Rogue's Tell. If you press the escape key, you can go to options, and this will show you all of the controls in the game. This way, if you forget any of the controls, you can always just go to escape and options, and then check them out here. You can also remap all the buttons except for the mouse buttons. You cannot remap those. You can only remap your keyboard buttons, which is dumb. I don't know why that's not in the game, but Q is an important key. We're going to be using jump a lot, so make sure you are aware of how to jump. It's one of the most useful things in the game if you're playing agility. Yes, so memorize. Test on Tuesday. Now we're going to go to the high scores. You can hit F2 to go to this. But you'll see the last nine kings or queens. It only shows the last nine. I haven't played in a while, so I'm not on here right now. I'm Steve Zor. The high scores stay permanently until people get a higher score than you. There's 90 high scores after the nine kings. And so if you scroll down, you'll see a lot of the same names. A lot of people that are really good at the game have high scores. However, this also means they died. When you kill the king, you don't keep your high score. It's only if you die. Two of my three highest scores are intentional deaths. Like my very highest score is an intentional death. I just intentionally got the highest score. So it would be up there. Additionally, when you press escape, you can get to your heritages and your challenges or you can press the F3 key for heritages and F4 for challenges. Now let us begin our second dungeon. In my first video I completed one dungeon and took the skill aim shot. With aim shot using bows and crossbows I get d3 damage for every agility modifier. At 9 agility I have a plus 2 modifier so the game will roll two three-sided dice Plus, I'll get the damage in my recurve and my arrow, so I'll do 43 plus 1 points of damage for every attack I land. If you press E and then press Control, you can look at your modifiers, your defensive stats, and then also it will show if you're immune to anything. I hate this amulet of nine lives. It never procs for me. As soon as I find anything better, I'm going to get rid of it. I wanted to go back to the shop because the shop has something that's incredibly useful. This potion of insight, it's diluted, so it means it won't last too long. But you can use it to identify items and it will make you a lot of money because identifying items cost 20 gold. And with this, even a diluted one, if I have all the items on the floor, I can pick them up and then identify them. And so that's why I'll bring stacks of items that are somewhat valuable and stack them near the entrance of the dungeons. Also just showing a reminder that I have that yellow potion, which is a potion of energy. Okay, so we unlocked the antidote potion heritage because we hit level seven. So the game's telling me in purple that I unlock the heritage. And so I press F3 and I scroll over it and I see now whenever I start a new game, I will get a potion of antidote, which would have helped me a lot in this game because I've already encountered poison so many times. Unfortunately, it's only one use. So I wouldn't have been able to get rid of all the poisons I've had, but I would have been able to use it once to save some money. Something I do at the start of every new dungeon is I drop all the extra crap I don't need. But a lot of this is items that will sell for a good amount. And with the insight potion in the shop, I'll be able to identify these. But I'm going to wait till the end of the dungeon. That way I can pick clean this dungeon of any valuable items. Also with insight potions, I'll organize the items by type and value. That way I don't fill up the shop of one type of item. And I also identify the most valuable items first because with a diluted one, I might not be able to identify everything. So I want to make sure I identify the most valuable items first. 
Also remember, you don't need to identify arrows, so it's good to pick up even the sticks. Of course, I don't always sell the sticks, but it's a good idea to pick them up. I'm forced to attempt to disarm this magic trap because it's in my way. And of course, I get poisoned yet again, good lord. I'm moving back to the stairs to town. This way, if the poison takes my life too low, I can just go back up the stairs and cure the illness, which I really don't want to have to spend more gold on. With deadly poison, you have to succeed in two health checks before you recover one life, as opposed to just succeeding in one health check. Fortunately, it's wearing off. I'm editing out me eating mushrooms now because we don't need to watch me eating mushrooms anymore. I hear a living water, which is a water elemental. Most enemies give off light, except for the animal type enemies like bears, which are extremely scary. But I'm going to wait here until it shows itself. That way I can fight it from range because all the elementals have an aura, which when you stand next to them does damage. A living water is frost damage and so it will do frost damage the higher your frost resistance is the less damage or you might not take any damage from its aura then when it attacks you it will also do frost damage and this can frost you which will cause you to lose a turn at times and that's pretty bad obviously so you don't want to be close to them as an archer it's nice i can stay away from it and not get in its range trying to use aim shot here because i see that human and if an attack that attacks from a distance doesn't target a human, you know it's an NPC. Now he scared me a little bit because he started moving towards me, but now he's moving all around, so it's an NPC. I'm going to talk to him. NPCs can either teach you a talent or a spell. It costs a talent point to learn one of their talents, but the spells certain NPCs will teach you they cost nothing, so you always want to talk to them. And then you can kill them if you want. There's no repercussions of killing NPCs. I'm going to let them live right now because there might be more enemies, and that way he can actually help me with the enemies. I figured this guy was Blade Fairy from his equipment. That's a Devourer. It's a Demon Mage, which they're pretty scary. I'm jumping backwards to get Philip closer. That way it will attack Philip instead of me and it killed philip i'm not hoping it runs out of energy so it won't cast any more spells okay it ran out of energy and i killed it all right so we got past the devourer i call them demons this game spells them like ultima does and it might be pronounced demons i'm not sure but they're demons so i just call them demons thanks to the devourer killing philip i didn't have to kill philip myself i can now loot philip Philip doesn't have much useful stuff on him besides some gold. Let's see what the Devourer has here. Ooh, nice. It has an amulet. And it has something interesting. A black soul gem. Soul gems are used in the spell Release Soul, which either used on an item will enchant that item or will do a lot of damage to your target. You can also left-click a black soul gem and it will give you a name of a curse. If you get 10 black soul gems with different names of curses and then cast the spell Bestow Curse, you will complete the challenge Dark Shroud. Checking out the amulet I got off the Devourer. It's a worn amulet of evocation. It's an amulet you have to use. Any of the amulets you have to use, they have, I think, a 1 in 36 chance of taking damage. When they're worn, and if they take damage, it will then get destroyed. You can repair it with a scroll of blessing. I'm going to use this amulet over the nine lives because I hate nine lives. Now we head to the next floor. Before I get into this tip, I want to explain the amulet of evocation. When you use the amulet of evocation, it shoots out an enlarged orb of fire, frost, and shock. It can do all three of those status effects when it hits targets or adjacent targets. Enlarged orbs explode, and if I used it on this duelist here, I would need to target the floor behind him, not the duelist itself. Otherwise, the elemental orb would hit me. I pressed C to bring up spells, went to arcane items, and I'm gonna set it at six. That way I don't accidentally cast it by hitting two when I mean to hit one. I tried to talk to the duelist. He's not friendly. 
you right click to talk or control in the direction to try to talk. And luckily he did not kill me. The elemental orb from the amulet of evocation scales with your stamina modifier as well as if you have focus cast. So when you're a mage that's when it hits the hardest. But it can still be a little bit useful with other classes but they're the most useful with mages. Here they're talking about hammers and flails. So hammers have crushing, which, as I explained before, halves the physical resistance. It only does it sometimes, not all the time. And then flailing goes around shields. And I forgot to mention, it also goes around targets that can parry. Not all the time, but sometimes. But flails also have crushing. And so that's why flails are pretty useful. But hammers have... 1d6 plus 1, which is the most for any one-handed weapon in the game. Here I'm talking about slashing weapons, which I'm not a big fan of. When you get the slashing effect, you get double the base damage of the weapon you're using on the enemy, which is nice at lower levels, but at higher levels, it's never going to proc because to get the slashing effect, you have to have more than double your modifier of an enemy's physical resistance. So if an enemy has three physical resistance, that means you need to have a seven modifier or higher to be able to get the effect. And enemies at the highest level, which is 20, have much higher physical resistances than that. Now we wrap up this ever so boring discussion of weapons with a reminder about piercing weapons which totally pierce through something's armor but it happens at half the frequency of crushing so I just want to make a note of that that it doesn't happen that often with piercing weapons so this is a maze floor I hate these floors they're maybe the worst type of floors in the game even worse than the ravine floors they're really big they have traps, oftentimes spike pits that are blocking where you can go, so you have to jump over one if you want to continue or reset the dungeon. I do not like these floors. They're really annoying, and you'll hear stuff all around you, but you can never tell if it's coming because there's so many little passages that you're not sure if they're coming from there. The skeleton feared me when I tried to attack it there. Just a reminder that both skeletons and demons will fear you when you try to attack them. You have to roll a fear check. So I leveled up here. I can either do strength or charisma. I'm going to go with charisma. That way I can sell items for more in the shops. Getting your charisma up is one of the keys of the game. I want to hopefully find some junk items that have charisma on them so I can increase it whenever I sell items, but I don't need to wear them at all times. I'm getting on low on arrows, so I'm gonna have to run back to town to uh, grab some of the sticks. <laughs> Leaving that trap there, that way, if an enemy comes by, they will have to disarm that before they come by, and I'll be able to see it even though it's not lit up. I can still see if a trap's there or if it disappears and an enemy came by. I can tell a snake's by by that noise I keep on hearing. I'm not that scared of the snake. I'm more scared of other things. Items that are just laying on the ground will never have enchantments on them, only items you find off of enemies' bodies and stuff like that. We're clearing this floor, we're clearing this floor. We're gonna pick some shrooms here, and I get poisoned again, good lord. Don't know if I've ever been poisoned so many times this early in a run. Thank god it was a short poison. I would have been dead otherwise if it wasn't a short poison. Just a friendly reminder here of always do shrooms in a safe place. That way you can dance safely once you do those shrooms. We all know that shroom dance is extra fun, but please do it safely. 
I probably should have just pushed that boulder in on the previous floor to close this floor because I do not like these floors as I've already mentioned and they're very big and I'm gonna have to get through that spike trap anyways but I'm gonna keep on trucking through and see what happens I'm getting a little of mushrooms hopefully I don't get poisoned thank you game so I hear that snake not sure where it is it still might be in an area I can't reach yet there it is all right gonna switch weapons so I don't waste arrows and we killed it pretty easily and we get poisoned again wow thank you very much game thank you very much and I got another do you get another poison from sitting on the trap I, I'm confused why I got blinding poison too I'm switching to the nine lives to hopefully save me if the poison kills me I gotta move off the trap and it's a strong poison so it's doing a lot of damage I'm probably gonna die if the amulet doesn't save me Let's see, please, please. Oh, yes, the amulet never procs, I swear. Never procs. Thanks, game. So, that's the first real death. Uh, the first run we had wasn't really much of a run, but that will happen. So, we actually lasted some turns. We're negligible talent this time, which is better. Scrolling through the items, I did it kind of fast, but you see, I didn't have any cursed items, which amazes me for the amount of times I got poisoned. So now we're going to go back to the character select screen. Oh, we see my score there, which is much higher than five. Thank you. Potion of Antidote is now checked because we completed that heritage. We're going to start a new run. And now, whenever I start a new run, I will start with that potion of antidote in my inventory. So I'm going to press E to bring it up. And yes, we see we have a potion of antidote and the food, water, dagger. I'm going to check the shops because you always want to check them to see what's in there. If there's going to be something you want to save up for, like this ring of elements here, I will buy that. First things first, unless there's a useful weapon or piece of armor that has something like agility or charisma on it I would buy that first probably if it was cheap if it was more expensive I wouldn't buy it but that ring of elements is gonna be our first goal as something we want to buy I kill Snells in the very first room because it's gonna slow me down searching for traps and then it will also eat the shrooms and I don't want it to do that so I'm going to search this room, check for hidden walls. I see they're unbreakable, all of them. And we don't find any hidden rooms. Got to kill this snail because it's blocking my path. And then when we level up, again, I'm going to take agility. So I get the plus two to my attack modifier and I get two dodge now as well. So that way I won't get hit as often. Training dummy might take play fairy. We'll see. After clearing this floor, I got some studded leather armor, a spell book, arrows, and bolts. It was a pretty uneventful floor. Glad I got some studded leather armor. Okay, this is a ravine floor. There's lava ravines and water ravines. Lava's bad. We'll get to lava in a bit, I'm sure. But water ravines, the water doesn't hurt you, but you have to roll a strength check to get out of the water and when you're in the water if you want to move around through more of the water it's one energy to do that if you're in the water or something else is in the water for every turn you're in the water there's a chance you'll spawn tentacles which are pretty tough at this stage I try to jump over all the bridges because if you roll a 2 on the 2d6 roll when you cross the bridges the game doesn't roll of the dice of 2d6 you'll break the bridges and if you have cursed items that increases your critical failure so you want to make sure you don't have cursed items when crossing the bridges or you can try to jump them like i do lava ravine bridges will never break unless you have cursed items but these bridges will break regardless of whether you have cursed items or not so i found a hidden door there's almost always at least one if not two on these ravine floors so it's good to check and I hit an alarm trap so now all the enemies on the floor will start moving towards me oftentimes there is something in this room oh there is there is some snells 
Hey there, Snells. I'm gonna close the door so they don't crawl out. Ah, I found some green arrows. These do an extra plus one of damage, which isn't that much, and they're kind of annoying to carry, so I usually don't even bother with the green arrows. I just sell them, because they sell for double. They're basically the blessed version of arrows. Ooh, more green arrows. Hit level four, so I get plus one life for every stamina modifier I have. And I missed another trap. Thanks, game. At least it wasn't that big a deal. Ooh, a hammer. Hammers, as we were talking about earlier, they do a d6 plus one damage, and it's crushing. Also, it's a durable weapon, which means it re-rolls. If it's going to take damage, it will re-roll that, and so it takes damage a lot less often than other weapons, which is a good thing, obviously. And just looking at my stat modifiers there, seeing all that I get. Uh, on armor, I wanted to note, see the weight modifier? So when I use like jump or try to crawl out of holes, I get minus one to the rolls because of that minus one. Oftentimes there is a hidden door at this wall. So we're gonna look, you right click or do control and then the direction to check. And oftentimes there's a hidden door here too, but there's not uh, on the ravine floors that look like this. So uh, when I cross the bridges, I will take off my armor if I know the floor is safe to do a jump and plus I don't have it identified and so it might be cursed as well. That way I don't have to worry about breaking the bridge. Ooh, a shop floor. You can always tell who the vendor is on a shop floor because they won't have a bow or a crossbow. So we're gonna see what he's selling. Always good to check what they're selling. Blessed Amulet of Reflection. That's a pretty nice amulet. Blessed Amulet of Evocation. Again, I, I do like those. Those hit really hard. Squirrel of Blessing. This will bless equipment, weapons and armor, but not jewelry. And then Scrolls of Blessing will also repair damaged equipment as well. So it will bless it if it's not damaged or will repair it if it's damaged. So they're always good to keep around once you're able to use them. Or it's a good idea to save them so you can then get common literacy to be able to use them. Make a note of the signs here. You're always able to tell if it's a shop floor by the signs, even if you don't see any of the guards or the vendor that's on the shop floor. So just keep an eye out. Shop floors are also always very small. They'll either be one room or two rooms. Sometimes they're his, a hidden room, but it's just an extra room. It's not one that like holds treasure or anything. Uh, so with blessed jewelry, we're, we're talking a little bit about here. Most blessed jewelry will double the effect, but some of it, instead of doubling the effect, will have an extra stat or some resistances, things like that. But like say the blessed amulet of reflection I saw there, that will double the chance of reflecting, or the blessed amulet of evocation does double damage as opposed to the regular amulet of evocation. So I'm gonna let the enemies come to me so I don't accidentally walk on a trap. And fortunately, there's a Snell, and enemies will always attack Snells if they're closer. They don't attack dogs, though. Dogs are neutral. Nothing really attacks a dog. Oh, surprised I hadn't got that tip for having a full inventory yet. But now we did, so we got that tip checked off for the heritage for seeing all the tips in the game. There's a useful thing you can do with animals and if you have the right food type. Like this dog here, if I throw this meat at it and it doesn't miss, I tamed it. Now I'll be able to command it by using the Z key 
and so I'm telling it to move there or to follow me. So you can do that with the animals. You have to have the right food type to be able to do that. Here we're talking about charms, uh, the third leg charm, probably the most useful charm in the game. If you have a blessed ring, you can drag and drop it onto the third leg and you will get that effect of the ring without having to have it equipped. But you can't have multiple ones in effect, you can only have one at a time. And it's the first one that you've picked up. So you can have multiple ones and use different legs at different times. So I'm showing my potions here. See that's a green potion but it's in a different shape. So make sure you're aware of the shape of the potions as well as the color. Or with like scrolls there will be two bands or one band. So that's a thing you gotta pay attention to if you're trying to use something that you think you know what it is. You gotta pay attention to the size, the color, and then whether it has multiple bands or not if it's a scroll. The studded helmet here, I'm going to use this as opposed to the plate cap because now I get more into my elemental resistances and then I get the having of confusion when I take a critical hit. This dark well here has some of the best talents in the game. Dark vision, which we're going to be taking, it halves the penalty from shooting at range because every two tiles there's a minus one to your modifier so it's harder to hit things from further away and then it also gives us plus one to our light radius dark vision does strong will pretty much a waste of a talent point i would never take this talent sixth sense is also pretty much a waste it's slightly useful but it's basically only used for me for doing a challenge silent cast is really good for mages silence immunity and getting where you don't use energy when you use spells sometimes the critical hit will increase the chance of that happening as well so i'm debating between dark vision and keen eye i'm gonna take keen eye which is basically a required talent in my opinion i still have a low stamina modifier so i'm not gonna detect traps very well so i'm still gonna do a single search but now i detect traps from further away and i get to re-roll fell trap checks which is super nice see I noticed that from an extra space away that trap and also when you notice traps when you aren't searching you don't get the experience bonus so it's also a way where I won't level as quickly now and like I said before I like to level slow until I'm level 8 because that's when the game starts getting hard this way I can get more items oh a thing to show about pets if I get confused, I can attack the pet, which is a bad thing, and now it's attacking me. Luckily, dogs suck. Otherwise, I'd be dead here because I'm confused for so many turns. Unlike with your dog, Wolf, which you get for killing the Dread Wolf, when that dog turns aggressive, it stays aggressive. I personally am not a big fan of pets, with the exception of Wolf. I just feel they get in the way. They will break the bridges on the water ravine floors, which I don't like. You can tame bears, which are really strong, but even bears I don't ever use. I know I'm probably in the minority on that. I think a lot of the really good players do like to use pets, but I, I just don't like using pets very much. With the swarm enemies, like this rat swarm, they have partial haste which means basically half the time they'll move twice in a turn. Taking stamina for my level so I can level up. Moving back in case there's more enemies that will kill me. So just playing it safe, which is something you always want to do in this game. We completed our dungeon here and we found a tome which would give us a good chunk of change. Double checking the walls because there can still be hidden rooms even though it says you completed the dungeon. In fact, sometimes the very first floor, you'll complete it, but there's actually a hidden room and then the dungeon ends up being huge. You can still reset the dungeon once you get to completion. So even though there's still a lot more dungeon to complete, 
if you run into a hard battle you don't want to fight by going downstairs and seeing there's like a ton of enemies you don't have to worry about fighting them i'm selling stuff to this shop here that way i don't fill up the shop in town so i don't have to worry about resetting it as quickly as i might otherwise I totally forgot that shops and dungeons can identify items, so I went back to town to identify the tomes which I'm going to sell to the dungeon shop. Mage Armor, that's one of the best spells in the game to have if you can get it. It's a draconic spell, so you have to have literacy draconic to be able to learn it, but it's a really good spell. Ah! Quit moving away from me, jeez. Alright, so we're selling the tomes to him to get uh, and sometimes it happens like the inventory disappears it's it's weird because he moves is when it usually seems to happen but it doesn't seem to mean anything but it's always like what the heck the items just disappear what's going on here oh i want that ring of elements a lot i tell you what but we're gonna have to wait a little bit longer before we're able to purchase it time to reset our dungeon Gotta type it in capital letters, and then we reset our dungeon. Hmm, now we have a lava ravine. They're pretty scary if you don't have confuse or fear immunity, because you can get confused and then you'll run into the lava and die. Or if something fears you, you'll run backwards into the lava and die, which is terrifying. So we're gonna kill this orc here. Hopefully it doesn't kill me. Ow. Ooh, wow, this is scary. There's more guys. I could die here. Oh man. I could stay at the inn and that would recover my life, but we're still low level, so I I'm not gonna do it. I'm just gonna see if I can recover because that guy hadn't noticed me yet. If he's aggressive, that might be an NPC and so I might not even get attacked by them. I was able to recover all my life, so we're good. We'll see if that guy's aggressive. I'm not sure yet. He just might not have noticed me. Oh, and my studded leather armor got broken. And he is aggressive. So that means he'll now work his way back to me. So I'm going to stay back here. That way I don't get any more guys that are aggressive. And the orc had some studded leather armor. Sweet. I didn't think he had any armor, but I was wrong. So now we're still good to go. You don't want to eat blood caps when you're around lava because if you get the confusion then you'll run into the lava so unless you have confused immunity don't eat blood caps unless you can be blocked through a door luckily throwing weapons aren't very good when enemies use them and it's probably yeah unless you have deadly throw wow yeah see i don't even do any damage Just throwing weapons really are useless unless you have deadly throw good an amulet and some more studded leather armor a scroll and an axe which could be valuable if I get an insight potion amulets of conjuration will summon a demon at where you target it they're nice to be able to do that to make a meat shield. Something so if there's a group of enemies, you can distract them by summoning a demon. And then that way it will get attacked and you won't be taking damage. When I explained water ravines, I said lava bridges won't break unless you have cursed items equipped. So... If you have items you don't have identified yet, you can either jump them or unequip the items. So I don't know if that human's going to be aggressive or not. So we're still going to be somewhat careful and not move too far forward yet. And I'm doing some inventory here. I'm going to try to still be doing the blood cap challenge, so I'm not going to eat any blood caps. But I'm going to keep water. So if I get set on fire, you can use the water and it will either lower the amount of time you're on fire or totally get rid of the fire that is on you. So it can save you from dying. 
Hopefully I get the ring of elements and then I can't be set on fire. So it looks like the way this guy's moving. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he's not aggressive. Now he's moving towards me, but he would have saw me, so he's not aggressive. So I'm not going to worry about the guy right now. Hopefully he doesn't have any cursed items because him running over the bridges, he could end up breaking the items. So I'll probably try to kill him at some point just so he doesn't break any of the bridges. Good, we got a bow and some more studded leather armor. Even though it's just a branch, it's still a bow to have so that way now I can attack things from a distance which will be good on any of the warrior enemies or certain animals, stuff like that. Awesome, a wand. That will bring me in some good money, especially if it's a really good one. But either way, it will bring in some money. Being kind of lazy and not unequipping my stuff instead uh, I'm just jumping the bridges which could come back to bite me ah hidden door like I said there's almost always one and sometimes two hidden doors on every ravine floor Usually in the hallways of the hidden rooms, there's a trap. Uh, yeah, see, there's a web trap. Oftentimes it's a spike trap or just a regular pit trap, which is really annoying, which is why I like amulets a ghost form. That way you can pass over the pits without having to worry. So I'm not gonna use the chain helm. If it was chain armor, I might use it at this point, but you don't get hit in the head very often, so I don't need to worry about it. And I got an amulet, which is quite good. I'm gonna have to eat some mushrooms. Good thing there's a hidden room. That way I can safely eat mushrooms without having to worry about running into the lava because otherwise I wouldn't dare eat any of the mushrooms. And usually once you get satiated, you have to eat about four or five with the negative effects. And unfortunately some of them are rotten. So that's why my food kept on decreasing. Okay, so this guy here, I'm going to kill him. I'll show you the Amulet of Conjuration. Summon that demon, so now he's attacking him. And I should have talked to the guy because he might have actually had a spell to use. I wasn't thinking I didn't even talk to him. I forgot to. Uh, now I'm killing the demon because I'm pretty sure they will turn aggressive. I believe with the scrolls, they don't turn aggressive. But when you use the Amulet, they will turn aggressive over time. I don't use it very often, or, or I should say usually they die so I don't get a chance, so I'm not 100% certain on that. By the way, I like picking up plate caps to sell because I won't identify them, but if I get an insight potion, I'll be able to sell more armor because they're a flat item and they'll go underneath the other armor. And this way I can sell more items before having to do an in reset. Now we are going to identify our two valuable items which is the amulet of seven keys. That's useful if you're using the talent silent move. It lets you keep on moving while you're hidden. Enemies won't see you and you won't keep on having to use the talent as you move. Now I'm gonna sell both these items because I'm not gonna use them. And guess what I shall be able to purchase? My beloved ring of elements. I always use this ring end game it will increase the three resistances of fire, frost, and shock. And now I'm also immune to the status effects from those spells, which when you get shocked, you're paralyzed, which often leads to death, which is why I like it endgame. Frost will make you lose turns occasionally, and then getting set on fire early in the game most often leads to death unless you can douse yourself with water. So... I love the Ring of Elements. 
After doing some inventory, continuing on to the next floor, I always search three times at the start of a new floor, even with keen eyes, to be safe. And I still should have been searching once, because until your stamina is 10 or more, you'll still hit traps occasionally, even with keen eyes. I critically hit the orc miner, and so it's confused. Usually they'll just run around randomly, or when there's walls they might do nothing. And sometimes they'll get an attack in, but he didn't. And that's the nice thing about when you critically hit something, they get confused. Figured that guy was aggressive because he moved towards me. When you hit the alarm trap, not everything on the floor will come at you right away. You have to move within a certain set amount of tiles before the enemies will start moving towards you. So luckily I didn't alert everything. Here we have an orc shaman. They use shock magic. And why did I move away? When you move, you have a chance of recovering energy. Now he might have recovered one energy to be able to cast another spell. Ah, it's hitting me kind of hard at this level. Mm, man. Ah, I should have used the amulet of conjuration. What was I thinking? Mm -hmm. It's a problem when you move and you don't think at times you end up doing dumb things like moving away and then not using my amulet of conjuration well time to start another run that's the way the game goes bye neighbor number four i'm fire thank you for watching my video